Yo, what is going on you guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Spectacular Spider-Man Season 3. If you are new around here, then make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more episodes of Spectacular Spider-Man in the future. And also make sure to hit that notification bell next to the subscribe button to not miss any of the episodes as soon as they come out. With that being said, let's get straight into the episode. Episode 5, Band Practice. We start our episode in Oscorp Tower. Donald Menken stares out of the window on a stormy night. Lightning strikes in front of him and we flash back to a memory of Menken's. We see his family, we see his wife and his child. He seems happy and everything seems normal. After this flashback, we flash back forward to present day with another flash of lightning. Donald holds his head up, but he can't muster a smile. He then walks down to the ground floor and says goodbye to the receptionist. He walks out of the front door and gets in his limo. He says to the driver just to go straight home, until they wind down the window to reveal Wilson Fisk in the car with him. Donald is shocked by this, and Fisk says it's useless to call security as he tries to open the door. Menken says, what do you want, Fisk? Establishing an already set relationship between the two of them. They look at each other for a second before Donald speaks. He says he'll never forgive Fisk for what he did to him. We can see that Menken is genuinely upset and angry at Fisk, as if he's had a never-ending grudge for the man. Fisk says that he was the one that stabbed him in the back, and now he's finally going to get revenge. Donald says that it was you who destroyed the Osmots, and Fisk smiles and says Oscorp will be mine slowly and surely, and Menken will be thrown out. Fisk says this is a warning and to be ready for what's coming. He doesn't want to fight unannounced. This scene will showcase Kingpin's confidence, but ultimately his honor as well. He will take what he wants, but he'll do it by showing who the bigger man is. Fisk unlocks the car and lets Donald out. He drives off, and Menken is stood outside in the rain with a face of anger as he looks into the direction as the car pulls away. We cut to Spider-Man on top of a building looking out into the city. It's a peaceful morning in New York. Peter narrates the events of the past few episodes, recapping us on what has happened. He talks of Harry and Gwen and how the Kingpin is ready to start a full-on war on New York. The city still hate on Spider-Man after the whole Spidey killed Norman storyline. Spidey has to redeem himself and to show the world that he's not who the Bugles say he is. Peter thinks to himself that it'd be nice for the city not to hate him, but as long as he keeps doing the right thing, the city will eventually come around. Spider-Man swings through the city and lands outside of school and goes in as Peter Parker. Parker. Peter walks through the hall and there are flyers going around for auditions to join the school band. As he walks through the crowd of people, we get a shot of Liz Allen picking one of them up and reading about it. We can see that she has really distanced herself from her old group of friends. She's evolving as a character and wanting to try new things. Gwen then bumps into Peter in the hallway and everything seems normal. Peter says that he's sorry for ditching and Gwen says it's fine. She understands he has a job to do. She tells Peter that Harry has officially been made a missing persons case since he hasn't been in school and everyone that they've asked hasn't seen him as well. And since the green was found in his locker, the police are getting involved now anyway. Gwen says that the professionals are handling it now and that's probably for the best. Peter thinks to himself in his head that that's not true all the time as we get a shot where the mask fades over the other side of his face. Gwen also says that they need to get their minds off everything that has happened and act like normal teens again. So asks Peter if he wants to go and do band practice with her and Peter is surprised stating that he's never played an instrument before in his entire life and Gwen says that she knows but she signed him up anyway. Peter cringes for a second but Gwen says that it'll be fun. Peter says that she never played an instrument either, and Gwen says that she played the flute when she was a kid for a couple of years, but she'd probably be really rough now. Peter says fine then, and they both head off into class. We cut to a scene with Kingpin. Kingpin says that he has developed a new plan to take Oscorp under his control, and an unexpected force has arrived into his fingertips. The Prowler asks Kingpin how can he be of use to his new plan, and the Kingpin just simply tells him, keep the webhead busy. We get a sinister smile from the Kingpin as we cut back to the school and after class. Peter is walking down the hallway and he's on the phone to Aunt May. He tells her that he's going to band practice and Gwen signed him up. May's surprised and says that you don't even play an instrument and never have. And Peter says that he knows and that's what he told Gwen. Peter then puts down the phone and goes into the auditions with Gwen. We get a montage of them two having fun trying to figure out the different instruments. Peter is good at nothing, while Gwen seems to be good at everything. Peter feels so useless, but it's clear that they're having fun just being together. This scene will really showcase how close they are getting with one another and how much they really care about each other as well. As we know, them two still have a romantic attraction to one another, and this was showcased all the way back in Season 1. Gwen really likes Peter and Peter really likes Gwen, but due to other circumstances, they have never been able to get together. However, this scene will really show their chemistry together. 
We cut to the end of the montage and they both bump into Liz Allen and it's really, really awkward. They all say hi to each other and Peter asks Liz what she's doing here. And Liz tells Peter that she wanted to try something new and Peter says the same and then he backtracks saying, well, no, Gwen wanted him to and it gets really awkward. Liz says, oh, that's cool and they say bye to each other and then Gwen says that that was really, really awkward. Peter agrees and then Gwen says that she thought their first interaction with her would have been more sour than that and then Peter says that they have already spoken together as she works at the Bugle now as a writer. Gwen is shocked and Peter says that they technically sorted everything but they didn't at the same time. We cut to them walking home. We get a scene where Gwen and Peter go to the bus stop and Gwen gets on a bus to go home. Gwen says that she had fun and Peter says that he did as well. They share a moment together where they just look at each other before the bus doors close and the bus leaves. He waits for the bus to turn the corner and out of sight and then as soon as it does Peter turns around and determinedly runs into an alleyway and changes into his costume and swings to the top of the building. Peter says to himself that now he has to get started on trying to track down Fisk, but how? Where is he? How can he stop such power as the Kingpin? Tombstone was enough, but this is on another level. Spider-Man swings around the city for a bit, thinking to himself about what to do. We then cut to a thermal camera from above, and then it's revealed that it's the Prowler stalking Spider-Man, following him. Spidey lands on the side of a building, thinking to himself, when he is wrapped up in a rope and pulled to the top of the building. Confused and wondering what is going on, Spidey tries to break out of the rope but can't. He stands up to his feet to see the Prowler stood in front of him. Spidey says, you're back for round two, are we? The Prowler doesn't say anything and starts to approach Spider-Man. With a lot of force, Peter breaks free of the rope and flips over the charging Prowler. However, the Prowler grabs Peter by the foot and swings him around and throws him off the building. Peter webs to the side of the building and swings back up, kicking Prowler in the stomach sending him flying over the building, falling to the other side. Prowler attaches his claws to the side of the building as he slows himself down. He activates a button on the side of his arm and starts to stick to the wall. Peter flips over the building and lands. They face each other on the building. Peter says, hey, walking on walls is his thing. Prowler throws a smoke bomb at Spider-Man. Peter starts coughing and then gets rugby tackled up against the building, breaking through the glass and into an office. Everyone inside the building gasps and starts to run as they fight each other in the office. Spider-Man uses desks and chairs to defend himself while the Prowler attacks Spider-Man relentlessly. They come to a standstill and both suits are damaged. The Prowler's energy pack on his back starts sparking. He notices this and then runs away. Peter regroups with himself and stands up as he collects himself. He notices a piece of the Prowler's suit came off on the floor. He picks it up and turns it over. And on the inside, it says, property of Alchemax Industries on it. Peter is confused by this, but he also knows that there finally is a way to track down Fisk. He finally has a lead. We cut to the Kingpin, talking to someone. Kingpin says, you are the perfect man for the job at hand. The camera pans round as a chuckle can be heard, revealing none other than the green goblin. The goblin laughs and says, oh gladly, he'll wipe Oscorp right from under Menken's feet and then laughs like a maniac as the episode draws to a close. Thanks for watching this episode of The Spectacular Spider-Man. This episode really started to showcase Peter and Gwen's relationship, and that really was the focus of this episode, but also setting up this massive storyline we have for the next couple of episodes. All the way up to nearly the end of the season, this is about to be a massive storyline with all these different players being set up in this equation. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit the bell so you don't miss any more episodes as soon as they're out on the channel, because you do do not want to miss this storyline. Once again, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit like if you did enjoy and make sure to comment down below what you thought of the episode and what you think is going to happen next in episode six. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and peace.